here we have a preserved hoof and it's a, it's a very good sample that was available to me, made to me by Simpro Corporation to just explain a simple uh, anatomy of, of, of a claw. We have the hoof wall here, the hoof grow, wall grows at 5 millimeters per month, horn production starts on the top, and then 5 millimeters per month, it slides down over. And that's why we can see these rings, what we call hardship grooves, that means something happened at this particular time. Could have been introduction to new pasture, a fresh spring grass, could have been calving time. So all of those things will affect it. And here we see. So again, here we see that the wall of the claw is, this is a very normal wall. That wall is probably somewhere between five and six millimeter thick and it really never changes. The other thing we can see here is that the, the pedal bone or the whole toe is a nice triangular shape. It's a nice pointy shape. Again here to point out that the dermis, the corium, is surrounded around the pedal bone and it, it's, it's, this is the area here where the horn, the wall horn is produced up here. Here we have the lamina where the suspension happens of the claw, and here down on the bottom here is where the sole horn is pro being produced. And back at the heel we have production of heel horn. One of the modifications in the claw is in the back two thirds of the claw, there is fatty tissue, it's, we call it, it's called the digital cushion. That digital cushion has a huge, has a cushioning effect but it also is very responsible in helping pumping blood. So it needs activity to move. So one of the things we can see here is, as we come out of the toe triangle, this area here gets thicker, and this is where the fat pad or the digital cushion is located. Up in the toe triangle, right up here, there is no fat pad, no extra. And when soles, become too thin. What's happening is that the corium actually gets bruised or gets injured from the outside in. And this results many times in poor horn production in the toe area, which then again makes them more, more vulnerable to problems in the toe region. So here, instead of the cross cut, we actually see the alignment of the bones in a cow's claw. We have P1, P2, and P3, the pedal bone. We also have a little bone in the back here that's called the navicular bone. The navicular bone is in place for the deep flexor tendon. It acts like a roller bearing for the deep flexor tendon because the deep flexor tendon will be connected right here. And if there would, the, the navicular bone wouldn't be here, that would be too straight of a pull. So it's a, a really neat modification. In some cases of when lameness lets, uh, uh, is let go too long, when we don't intervene quickly enough, infection will come up through the sole and it will get into the joint, which causes, uh, causes a deep digital sepsis. So we're going to get infection bone through the tendon into this joint and that usually means that there is no going back. Uh, as, as everybody knows, bone infections are, there, there's no hope for curing bone infections. So the only reason, we get, the only thing we can really do is try to prevent it by early intervention of lame cows. Once we remove this part of the claw, we can see here a deep hole and layers coming into, into the sole area. This is what's typically called a sole ulcer, and it's caused by continuous trauma of the posterior end of the pedal bone in the, in the solar region. So what's happening is here, this is one of the things we talked before about, if we don't take care of this, infection crawls up through this 
as bacteria penetrate unhealthy horn, and that's how the infection eventually gets into the joint, through, or through the tendons into the joint. So with functional trimming, we're removing some of this unhealthy horn, we're reducing the trauma in this particular area, and the corium is no longer inflamed, and it can start producing healthier horn again. A lot of times, those cows will completely recover again. Sometimes this can be done, as we see probably in, uh, at times on farms, that we apply a block to the healthy claw to elevate the disease claw to just even remove more of the trauma through uh, an elevation of the, of the disease claw. Through my travels throughout the world, what I'm seeing is that there is, there's one thing in common with the people, with the dairy producers that have low lameness. They don't tolerate it. They're very proactive in, in everything. They're proactive in making sure their cows are trimmed or inspected at least for a trim. They're very proactive in making sure that their daily routine, that their time budgets are right, that their standing is, is not a, a extended, that their cows are cooled while they're in the sheds, that, that they have water available when they come out of the dairy. All of those things that keeps them healthy and keeps them keeps them productive.